In March, the free IndyCar IR18 2023 mod for AMS2 was released. It provides the full IndyCar 23 grid with authentic teams and drivers, including over 60 liveries distributed between four racing specs, as well as a reworked push-to-pass system closer to reality than any other, meaning 200 seconds of P2P per race, 20 seconds per lap max, and disabled on lap one. And at the end of May, with version 2, even a special update for the Indy 500 was released, further deepening the experience. It is a great collaborative effort of the modding team and, quite rightly, one of the most popular mods for AMS2 out there currently. However, with update version 1.4.8, the current Indy cars, as interpreted by Razer, have now been integrated into the game as another paid content of the Racing USA DLC. The question is, do the FUSA23 now make the IndyCar mod obsolete or does the free community content still have its justification? That's what I'm trying to find out here and today in a one-to-one -one comparison. I'll drive a four-lap race each with the FUSA23 and then the mod on Road America with identical session settings. Which car model feels better? Which series looks better? Which sounds better? Which one comes closer to the real IndyCar series? And most importantly, which one is more fun? Okay, rolling start. The first thing I notice, of course, is the generic wheel. Here we go. The sound sounds very good and convincing, I'd say. We'll hear the turbo whistle. The skins I'm using is as far as I know, a, a rip-off of the <laughs> IndyCar mod that we're going to watch later. So they should be <laughs> pretty much on par. Still there. Still there. But in terms of racing wheel... Oh, right, ouch. Right. There was some contact, luckily no damage. But in terms of Gloves, helmets, suits, steering wheels, that's generic material. So basically the same for, for every car and driver here. As this car is new and also directly profits from the new physics of the version 1.5, let's see if I can go by here. Yes, he left the door open very long, so thank you. But he's still, yeah, next to me, cool. That's a switchback. <laughs> And now first lap done, and now let's see, as with lap two, we are allowed to use push to pass. Look at the blue, blue bar down there in the left bottom. There we now have the this little flash sign indicating that it's active. And I think I'm going to use the push to pass then here on, on the straight. Yeah, the moraine sweep is pretty good for using the P2P and that gets me next to him. Oh, lets me, oh, running wide, ooh, big snap and an unsportsmanlike conduct. Hey, Timo, and a warning, oh God. <laughs> but finally, clear left, I'm through. Yeah, just let me finish my thought. As these cars also already profit from the new physics, 
like the other Formula cars that already have received the update, these feel great. I feel super connected from the first second on, feel every bump, first feedback gives me all the info, detailed, granular that I need, leaves hardly anything open. To be fair, I'm not an expert on IndyCar racing. I haven't watched much over the last 20 years, so I'm not very familiar with the development of these cars, but I know they're also using turbos, they're using P2P. Ecology is a factor and reliability, safety, of course. What's relevant for me also is the fact if I can come or if there's a chance to come close to the real time, so to say, and if there's a similar feel to it. I gotta say, Reza has done a brilliant job. My best time in time trial is about three seconds of the real time of the real race a couple of weeks ago. While the best one in time trial came pretty close to the pole lap. So that's almost on par, feels pretty good. So physics authenticity is definitely a factor here. We've also got, as I said, authentic liveries. The custom AI is a work in progress, if I understood the motor correctly, but that's something that can be tweaked, of course. Wow! Ooh! Ooh! Uh, I moved out in, th in the last moment. Sometimes they're, they're breaking pretty early. And another snap. Oh, that's not good, Timo. Yeah. Oversteering onto the main straight. It's not good. No momentum here. Using push to pass. Uh, no, not gonna make that. Corner before him. Yeah, let's keep our line. Let's bite our time until we're on Moraine again. So let's give it another shot. And also here it seems, I haven't tested it in a long race, of course, but only in these four laps, that the P2P is not regenerating, so it stays right. where we left right. it. And honestly, I think this is this is a genius rule. I'd, uh, again, I haven't watched much IndyCar racing, but it seems to me that this is just gen genius. To have 200 seconds per race, 20 seconds in succession, max, that's so cool. And at least on paper, to me, seems superior to the DRS technology Formula One uses, as the Indy cars are, are using all the same Delara chassis and everything else is pretty much regulated. There of course are pretty tight races, a lot of wheel-to-wheel -wheel battles. I know that their speed is more on a Formula Two level, so significantly slower than Two, Formula One, but for me it's, it's about the racing, not so much about necessarily the peak of technology. So as we're getting round the last corners for the last time, now onto the main straight and over the line in P13. So basically I made up just one place here on AI 100. The times are significantly slower than in real life here in the race. It's about five seconds, but that's also on me. I haven't done much practice and I think I, I can easily go two, three seconds faster with more training. The aliens out there they will be able to get even closer. Now to something completely the same. Or isn't it? Well, first thing I notice is the different cockpit here, green, green, green. different steering wheel, 
obviously the modders have put a lot of effort in here. They say it's four different wheels in total at the moment. Coming more. Uh, let's see how the, the driving feels. I think the sound is, it's almost identical. I mean, perhaps it's my ears, but I think both versions, iterations of IndyCar sound great and almost the same. We have the turbo whistle also here when downshifting and decelerating. To my ears, it just sounds the same and both are top notch. So again here, it's the functioning P2P system, meaning it's disabled here on lap one. We have to rely on our native skills. <laughs> no te technical help. And I've already made up three positions and probably you have seen it already. The pace here in the mod is significantly slower and this is well more or less the only issue I have with this otherwise fantastic awesome mod. Times are eight, nine, even ten seconds off the real times and no matter what I did driving wise on the setup I just couldn't get up to top speed here on the back straight. Look at that, I'm picking out at 280, 290. So that's about 20K less than Razor's model. And that's a pity because it takes away a lot of the authenticity. In time trial, I did only times about 150, 150. And although there may be a lot of people driving fa faster than me, I'd say, a 140 or 141 is impossible with this mod. So is it the physics? I guess so. Yes, I've noticed that the mod has significantly less downforce than the FU's A23 and that it understeers more. And these are the two crucial factors, in my opinion. Here I'm using the push to pass for the first time. Wow, yeah. Also, they are braking somewhat awkwardly sometimes. I had to move out of the way to avoid a collision. On the other hand, on the positive side, there are so many things to mention. I mean, these are the original liveries fitting these cars almost perfectly. There is now also a version without the this the halo bar there in, in the middle, so you can put it on transparent. They have added that. Then there is the special specs version for over racing, especially the Indy 500. As I've mentioned, different wheels suiting the different car specs and last but not least a super accurate custom AI which I'm sure will be further tweaked and optimized as the real season progresses. Did you hear that? Of 157.5. So yeah, 10 seconds off my time with the Razor car. I think this is just too much. Sorry, sorry guys. It is definitely not the AI, not the drive lines. They are good. The AI behavior, of course, is good. As you can see, I'm, I'm racing with them, having a lot of fun. A difference here is that I've also worn my left front here to a degree that it's now yeah, dramatic, I'd say. Too many lockups on the first lap. 
which now is definitely not helping me in improving my times. Especially here, in the carousel. Yeah, can't put my foot down early enough. So again, look at that. 270, scratching 280. Wow. That's too slow. That's just too slow. Wow. Maybe it's me. I can't rule that out. Maybe I've done something completely wrong with the setup, but as I've tried almost everything, all extremes and in-betweens, I think the cause for that lies somewhere else. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Look at my tires. Increasing the understeer even more and uh, I'm pushing him wide there. Oh, didn't do that on purpose, but please excuse my, my ignorance and Incompetence, sorry for that. Yeah, I'm um, oh, getting super deep and late. Yeah, the state of the front is not funny anymore. So, this is already the last lap, and I've made up five places in total. Not always in the fairest way possible. Yeah, to sort of round that up. Every iteration has its positives and slight negatives. Of course, if you're more on, on the visual side, maybe the mod is for you. If, if you're more on the, let's say, authentic, authentic times side, then I think the Razer car and series is the one you should pick. But again, this mod here is for free, guys, as long as you have an account on Race Department. It's available there, I've linked it in the description below, and it's of course doing its job. And, I, and I'm pretty sure that, that the crew of modders will keep on working on that, at least I hope so, yeah? Because it has some unique, really genuine features that need to be maintained and further improved. And especially if you do not want to spend any more money on Automobilista 2, this is a super alternative to the Razer car, making it possible to enjoy IndyCar Racing 2023 to almost the fullest. So with that I'd say thanks a lot for watching, happy racing guys, see you on the next one, bye!